you know, in the summertime, I have a lot of time because I'm a teacher, but that's not the same as being full time because you don't depend on the money. There's a psychological effect to it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. Welcome to Commonwealth Cabin. We're glad you joined us today. We appreciate you. If you're new, my name is Kevin, and what we do in here is we sell stuff. <laughs> we buy it on the Commonwealth Picker Channel, and we sell it in here, and we have a good time doing it. So we sold, typically, this is a Sunday video for you all. So you should be, I don't know when you're, maybe you're watching this on Monday, I don't know. But if you're watching this Sunday when it comes out, we're probably at the moment we're talking right now doing quite a bit of shipping hopefully anyways doing quite a bit of shipping because that means we've sold some things this weekend hopefully anyways but i try to get ahead of the game a little bit plus i like to get a couple of viewer questions which i rarely get a chance to answer usually put that out on the sunday video try and throw a couple in so i'll stop talking here and i will uh, make sure we have enough time for those questions at the end but i did in just a second after we show you a couple things that sold want to talk a little bit about what my day looks like typically and what it would typically look like i think if i was a full-time reseller but in the meantime let's take a look at what's sold don't have to walk too far here for this one snap into a slim jim here this is his wcw days usually see in the black and white that's wcw usually the purple and gold is what you'll see Old Randy Macho Man Savage. This should be mid 90s, I think. Let me see if I can see a WCW. Hey, look at that. 1995. Best year ever. <laughs> All right. So that one sold for $11 plus shipping. I don't know where I picked this one up. I just can't remember. I just can't remember. I think I just vaguely remember picking it up on a garage sale table for like a buck. I'm like, that's going to sell, and I think I grabbed it. But maybe you remember. Maybe you saw a video on Commonwealth Picker, and you can tell me which video I picked it up. But $11 plus shipping, so a little bit of profit right there. Next one was a freebie, which is really cool. Not a huge seller, but I picked up a bunch of these, and a lot of them went in my, went in my uh, antique booth down there. And somebody asked me about that, now that we're talking about viewer questions. I don't know how many people live around here. There's not too many, I don't think. But Bell Treasures and Needful Things, both on North Bridge Street in Bedford, are where our two booths... Actually, we have two booths in one and one booth in the other. That's Blue Ridge Mama calling. I probably should have turned my phone off. Hold on a minute. Let me grab it. Nope. It's my dad. Watch this. I'm going to hang up on my dad. Is that terrible or what? Pop, I'll call you back in a minute. <laughs> All right. I have no idea. What am I talking about here? Oh, antique booths. So if you go in there, just say, hey, Commonwealth Picker sent you, and you'll get 10% off anything that's in any of my booths. Uh-oh, who's here? Turner's here. Take a look. What's up, buddy? What's going on? You're a little early for the hunt. You got two of them today, buddy. <laughs> but I'm videoing. Let me get this done, okay? All right. At any rate, to finish my story here, we got a couple of things for the antique booth, but this one I kept and sold in here. All right, right here. Life Magazine. 100 events that shaped America. And so this is the bicentennial. So this would be 1976. Look at that. How about that right there? The ads in these things are just amazing. Just some cool stuff right here. Look at that. Gone with the wind. Hmm. Good stuff. Excellent condition. Look at that. Love it. I could look through this stuff forever. I'm glad I'm selling it because I'll just waste like an hour. Wow. See, I'm already, look, I'm just ignoring the fact that I have a video right here. And we're just looking at ads and look at that. Sweet. All right, anyway, so for $12.99 plus shipping and it was a freebie. All right, next one went to a viewer and I think I picked this up for $2 at a sale. I pick them up every once in a while. I never get the great ones, unfortunately. Like I see my buddy Mike out there, Rideshare Reseller, get... In California but I picked these up for two bucks and they sold for I think 15 plus shipping so I grabbed these knives I just sold the knives not the block so it's just the knives although I probably should have just brought bought the whole block here not even in great condition but they're good knives old homestead and like I said I think I paid two dollars for it and I'm gonna be able to sell that block in my antique booth right there I just put them in here to store the knives right there 
So I think we took an offer on these for 15 plus shipping. I think originally I had them for 20 plus shipping. So not a huge profit, but you know what? I'll take it when I can get it. It's about a $10 profit right there, but it was a viewer who bought them. And they left a little message here. Hello, thank you. These are, well, I don't know it's a birthday present, but they left all this stuff. I think they want me to read it. These are a, a birthday present from my boyfriend in February. I watch your YouTube channel and love seeing what you pick at garage sales. I too sell on eBay and other platforms and enjoy the reseller life part-time as I work for a community college. Just a teacher. I'm assuming a teacher. Maybe not. I don't know. As I work for a community college, hope to be much more full-time in the future. That's interesting. What a segue into what I'm going to talk about in a second. Again, thank you and keep up the good work. Cleone, C-L-E-O-N-E. Uh, of Cleon's place. Cleon, Cleon, boyfriend, Cleon's place. Did I pronounce that right? You gotta forgive me, but I appreciate it. These are Japanese knives right there. So we hope you enjoy. So appreciate the sale. All right, you don't know this, but I just filmed the whole video and I forgot to talk about the one thing I wanted to talk about. <laughs> I'm like, I gotta go out there and film the rest of that thing. It's about whether or not, what what's the difference between doing full-time and part-time psychologically just looking at a one day snapshot. So, you know, I think it, I can only imagine I'm not a full timer. I'm, you know, in the summertime, I have a lot of time because I'm a teacher, but that's not the same as being full time because you don't depend on the money. There's a psychological effect to it. And, you know, it's okay if I go sit and drink lemonade in my chair, you know, for half the summer, I'll be okay because I still get a paycheck. But, I think that, and I just kind of did a little experiment in my brain the other day. I had a snow day. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to play with the kids and do whatever we got to do. But I'm going to treat this like I was full time. And what would I do in a typical day? Well, let me tell you, I slept in for two more hours. <laughs> you know, I go to school. I have to be at school by seven and it's 40 minutes away. So I got to get up at 545 every day. And that's a double edged sword, right? You know, but you have to get up and get your day going. And so I go to school, I do all that stuff, and I come home, I'm usually home around 3.30 or so, and then I have, well, I visit with the kids a little bit, especially if they're leaving for gymnastics or something, and then I get to work down here, and this feels like a vacation. But if I was full-time, I'm not so sure how long this would feel like a vacation. So let me know out there if you're a full-time picker, a full-time flipper, full-time reseller, the psychological effects. I can only imagine you need to be extremely disciplined. And I'm pretty darn disciplined, I got to tell you. So I did sleep in, but I got up and I did the things that I would typically do in a day. And I got most of them done long before. I listed $200 worth of items, $200 worth of profit items. And I think if I was ever to do full time, that's how I would treat it. Every day, no matter how many items it was, I would list $200 worth of profit. Now, $200 worth of profit doesn't mean you're going to make $200 worth of profit because some of those items won't sell for that top dollar that you've asked for. But I think, you know, with the fact I have my wife helping me out and whatever, I think we can make $200 a day in profit. And I don't know if that would apply to like seven days a week or five, but that might just be enough money to get us across the finish line and be able to pay the bills each month. So I don't know. What do you think out there? It depends on where you live, of course. If you live in California... $200 a day and won't cut it. But if you live where I do, $200 a day might cut it. So at any rate, I didn't want to talk about money per se. I just wanted to talk about the discipline that it takes to get through a day. And I was able to get pictures done. Usually when I'm teaching, I get down here. I don't leave down here if the kids are gone and they come back after gymnastics or whatever. If they come back, I'm usually in this building here till about 10 o'clock at night. And then we do it all over again. So uh, I don't get too many pictures done, but in the day off and a snow day, I got a lot of pictures done. Let me know if you're a part-time picker, what your schedule is. Let me know if you're a full-time flipper, flipper, I should call them flippers, right? Resellers, what your schedule is. And if you're full-time, how much discipline does it take? Or is it easy? Because you know you got to pay your bills. Hey, y'all. Blue Ridge Mama here again. I had another sale on Macari. Um, this one is some old clothes of Bubba's, two Nike shirts, both the same size and good condition, and I accepted an offer for 15 so made probably about $6 and some change I saw on there. Hey, Turner, you got a couple of homeschool hustler sales right there. What do you got, bud? A nom nom and a penguin. Nom a nom penguin. and a Coca-Cola penguin. That's right, and this one went to a viewer, went to Carol. 
The Num Num Penguin. Would you say thank you to Carol? Thank you, Carol. And she said that she just loves the fact that y'all do some giveaways or you do some charity work, she says. That you give a portion of your sales to charity. And we enjoy doing that, don't we? Yep, and you give $1 for every sale. So you give $1 to what? Save dollar, spend a dollar, and donate a dollar. You got it, buddy. And this is, what did you say that was? A num-num. A num-num. And I didn't even know it was in here. A num-num or a num-num? What is it? Num-noms. Snackable num -num. snow cones. See, I didn't even know this was in here. I, it sold, and I'm like, what is this thing? So I guess Blue Ridge Mama must have done a uh, retail arbitrage on that. I have no idea what she bought it for, but it sold for $9 plus shipping. And it never got marked down, so I'm assuming she made some money on it, so... Anyway, that sold for 12 plus shipping, and that came from a sale we did not too long ago, and I can't remember the name of it, but are you yawning again? Yeah. Remember that? For a while, you'd yawn on every video. <laughs> yeah. We paid 50 cents, and we made 12 plus shipping, and that was to Carol. Carol said that she got that for a family member who likes penguins, who likes Coca-Cola products. That's what it was. What so does Carol, product mean? For what's product mean? Yeah. That's a good question. Product comes from the word produce, which means to make something. So somebody made this thing, and they told you that you just absolutely have to have it. And you know what? I'm happy about that, because that's why we sell stuff. <laughs> when you take my boring history class someday, Turner, it's called mass consumerism. And we love it. Wait, <laughs> Us I want to take your one it. day? <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. At any rate, that one went to Carol. So let's thank Carol. And it is headed your way. $12 plus shipping and $9 plus shipping for that one. Thanks, bud. Bye. Hey, one more sale that I forgot about. And that was because it's so run of the mill. But it won't be long. If you've been watching this channel, we've been selling these literally for two years. Actually, three years before I started the channel. But it's a size large. I love this shirt, actually. I should probably keep one. I think there's two left. I should probably keep one for myself. Bought them at Sam's Club, and at this point, we're not making much money on them. Just a few bucks. $13.50 plus shipping on that. Hey, just have one sale in here, and then a, an NMN, of course. So, or at least for now. It'll be a day when they finally are done. We're just doing the one a day. There was a time, if you're new to the channel, there was a time where we were, we were selling 20 of these a day. And if I listed them all with a you know, multi-quantity on eBay, they would all sell in a day. I mean, I literally put these on commonwealthpicker.com and they're gone within minutes every single time I list it. it. Blows my mind. So, you guys are amazing out there. So, at any rate, here we go. We have this, this Inaman Club, I guess. This family. Of, how's my life come to this? I'm not quite sure. Here we go. Coogee. This is a Rally Roots special out here. This is the first time I heard that mentioned years ago was on Rally Roots because it's made in Australia. Well, I don't know if it's made in Australia. But the brand is Australian. It's made in China like everything else, right? So this one we had up there, I paid a dollar for it at a sale. One dollar. I wish I could remember the name of that sale. The ladies at that sale were absolutely hilarious. I loved it. And that's how I remember sales. The people who sell things to me. The personalities of the people who are selling the stuff just click. I can see that lady's face clear as day. I, I can hear her voice. I don't know. You don't care. All right, Kuji. Paid a dollar. Listed it for 40 and I'm trying to remember if I sent an offer. Sometimes if I see a lot of watchers on it, I'll just drop it a little bit. But I think I got an offer for this, or somebody sent me a message and said, would you take, which I usually don't do that. But I did on this one, $30 plus shipping because I paid a buck. It's in pretty good shape. So you see Kuji, some of it sells, some of it doesn't, but you know, I'll take it. So 30 bucks, it's probably, it's about a $25 profit. I think that one will fit in a padded flat rate. I think so. Eight, you know, eight bucks ish. I don't know. It used to be seven fifty two. The new rates I haven't quite memorized yet, but it won't be long. This one's going out to Cheryl. And I'm sure Reagan will say thank you because Cheryl bought something else. But since it's in here, I figured I would read to you what she put. All right, and it's not just Cheryl, it's Cheryl and Ben. Dragonfly Attic Treasures on eBay. Hi, Reagan Turner, Bubba, Blue Ridge Mama, Kevin, and of course the cute animals running around your feet. We watch you all the time. It's fun to sit inside in the cold weather and watch your yard sale videos. <laughs> I miss yard sales, y'all. <laughs> I can't wait. It's like my therapy. You know, I don't have to pay a shrink. I just go yard sailing early in the morning and I listen to music by myself in the car and go from one sale to another talking to great people. 
and it's just awesome. So at any rate, here we go. Watch the yard sale videos on the Picker channel and the results on the Flipper channel. Thanks, Reagan, for having the store. You're doing an awesome job, Cheryl and Ben, Dragonfly Attic Treasure. So thank you, and I think you bought one more thing out of the store. Reagan will say thanks out there. Okay, and I wanted to answer a couple questions here in a minute. Reagan's going to say thanks to a couple people. We have a... Actually, the announcement's coming out in a couple days. Reagan will probably tell you on the Monday episode her new little thing that she's doing. Plus, we do have that new channel. Thanks to a lot of you for going over and subscribing. There's no content on there. There probably won't be for a while. But we're going to sell off Rich's stuff. We're going to have a channel just to sell off Rich's warehouse. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it would be something fun to do. We'd help him out, be some good content on that channel. And maybe some of y'all could buy that stuff. I don't know. Maybe we'll put something else on that channel. He does storage stuff. So I thought maybe he'd take us along on a storage auction or something one time and we'd put it over there. But at any rate, just something fun to do. And that one I'll link in the description as we're going to do over the coming days. The Yu-Gi-Oh! lot is also from him. That was a consignment sale and that auction is up. I've had some people ask. But I did have a couple people ask about the purple ab roller. And how do you ship that thing? Or how does it break down? How does it actually work? Because you can't ship. Well, I suppose you could ship that giant box. But you just take the screws out. So I'm going to show you how I do that out there. I think you probably saw it a little bit when we were out there looking at the stuff. But I'll talk about it for just a second. And then we'll go to the questions. So I hope we're all having a great... hope you had a great weekend. And we hope you sold a lot of stuff. And we'll see you next time. All right, Reagan. You got two shirt sales today. What do you got? Cheryl. Cheryl got the gray Commonwealth sticker and Debbie got the blue Commonwealth sticker shirt. You say Cheryl with the gray mm -hmm. and, and Debbie. Debbie with the blue. Thank you Cheryl and thank you Debbie. And Reagan yes. you have an announcement coming up. Is it going to be yep. next show? Mm -hmm. Next show you got a new product coming into the Commonwealth. Yep. You're excited about it aren't you? Yeah. Alright well we'll tell them tomorrow. Thank you baby. Bye and don't forget to get your stickers at CommonwealthSticker.com Alright bud we got a nice little gift and you remember when you asked people to send you ornaments for mm -hmm. your tree? Well, this one just came in. And she says she sends everything out slow. So this is uh, Kim. If I remember, this was the uh, Lower Sackville, Nova Scotia. If I remember. You gotta love that name. Here you go. Inner City Scouting. Oh, that's right. This is Sunshine Scouts, Scout Badges, and more. And you have left some wonderful notes. And this is too. I've already read it, so I'm not going to read the whole thing. But I'm just going to stop it here. If you all want to read it, you can pause it. She gave you some homework here. See if I can find it. Right here, it says, Challenge to the Homeschool Hustlers. Can you name all five of the Halifax forts featured on the badge? And so the answer is absolutely not. But we're going to work on that. Uh, we're going to work on The that. bridge. <laughs> <laughs> the bridge. It is a bridge, isn't it? Look at that. All right. Well, we will check that out for sure. That little badge right there. That's pretty cool. And so you have given me a few little hints and stuff on the messages. Oh, the uh, messages. white thing. I That's see a lighthouse. A huh? lighthouse, yeah. Yeah. So this is from Kim. You want to say, Kim, thank you? Thank you, Kim. And she has three in a man. What do you think about that? Check out... This is kind of cool, by the way. Pewter. Is that made in Canada, I'm assuming? Yep, made in Canada. That'll go on our tree next year. And how about... I mean, does that thing not just look like the cabin or what? That thing is perfect. I love it. And we are getting some love from Canada lately, Turner. We're going to have to find a plate. <laughs> I think, what is every plate blue and white up there? Or what? No, there's green ones. Deep greens and blues are the colors I choose. James Taylor. Look at that. Almost fits perfect on that whole thing. Beautiful. Love it. Thank you so much. I have a Pat. I have a Patrick from Question. I have a question from Patrick. And he says, I love the show. I love history. So please, more of that. Weird question. Where did you get that sweet blue chair? Love it. And if I may ask, what are the dimensions of the cabin? Yeah, it's 12 by 28 minus 4 for the front porch. So 12 by 24, but there's a lofted area above the porch. So, yeah, you know, 12 by, we'll say 26. <laughs> hey, the blue chair, I pulled up the video when I saw the question. It is from a video on Commonwealth Picker. It's garage sale, private pick, comma, I had my run of the place. And it's about a minute and 40 seconds into the video. And it was a private pick at one, speaking of history, at one of my AP World History students' homes. Her mother works here in the building, and they know what I do. And they say, hey, come on over. And I did, and they gave me the chair. And let me tell you, that thing weighs a ton. Like, 
almost threw my back out trying to get that thing in my truck. But I absolutely love it. It's so comfortable and it will probably never leave the cabin until it falls apart because I'm not picking it up again. So thank you, Patrick. Hey, I have a question here from, I don't know how to pronounce this here. I think it's what my homie. It might be what my oh my. <laughs> Either way, here's the question. How do you know that the guy you sold those baby shoes to wasn't a reseller? And this is referring back to a video on Commonwealth Picker where I said, I flipped this garage sale fine before I left the driveway. I bought some baby shoes, a Nike baby shoes, and I can't remember what I even paid for them. And I flipped them, uh, pretty much doubled my money, paid for everything else at the sale to a gentleman coming up the driveway who was asking about them. <laughs> and I flipped them to him and, she, and he had a story about their going to his granddaughter or whatever. And I just flipped them to him because I was gonna make a quick buck and pay for everything else I had and there's less work to do. And I've done that uh, before, but not quite in that way. And sometimes I wouldn't. Those weren't huge money makers. They were gonna make money. I could have made more money than I ended up making there, probably three times the money that I ended up making there, but with no work, right? You just flip it. And so their question here, how do you know he wasn't a reseller? Actually, I think he was a reseller and I thought he was a reseller right then, just from the way he acted. You know, he didn't ever look to see the size of the shoe, for instance. He didn't even look to see if they were boys' shoes or girls' shoes. So my guess is he is a reseller. I saw some other stuff he was looking at uh, as I was walking out. He was definitely a reseller. So he even looked at the vacuums right there that I had, which is fine. You know, I'm not saying it's wonderful to, to lie to somebody. I try not to do that, but uh, you get the point. And I had no, maybe he did. Maybe he did have a grant. I'm a reseller. And sometimes I stay stuff in the video like I was buying some slinkies the other day. And I said that I was going to uh, give them to my kids in their stocking. And so somebody commented like, oh, you know, how do you lie to people like that? It wasn't a lie. It was absolutely the truth. Just because you're a reseller doesn't mean you're not going to. So there were three of them, right? I'm selling one and it'll pay for the other two, not making much money. Then I have two brand new slinkies that I'm going to put in my kid's stocking this year. So I'm not saying a reseller can't also have a granddaughter, <laughs> okay? They definitely can. So, and I will oftentimes buy things and people are like, you know, why lie and what? I'm not lying, I'm telling the truth. I buy a lot of stuff for my kids and sometimes it doesn't quite work out or they don't want it or whatever and I will resell it. But uh, they're not mutually exclusive, but I would be willing to bet, uh, to, bet, to bet $15 that he was a reseller. Thanks for the question. Question from Thrifting in the Ozarks. I posted that, that polo, that all over polo po pony shirt purple one XL that I bought for five bucks I think sold for 90 plus shipping and I posted it in Instagram and this was the message from thrifting in the Ozarks and you were smart to get it how did you know it was gonna be a good one so I've seen those before I've never bought one before not that I can recall so a lot of times what I'll do is I, I don't know what other people call it I call it reverse engineering or re looking it up in reverse which I don't know why I call it that sometimes I'll just come up with a brand or a type of product and I'll do a little research on it it just you know it doesn't matter what it is so it could be like Sony you know that broad and then go in there and then Type in all the things that are Sony, or not type it in, but, but click search Sony, and then go to Sold's Highest Priced First. And it'll show you the highest priced Sony products first. You could do Sony Walkman, and then you could find like that Bolo in that category. You could do like, I don't know, laser discs or horror movies, and then you would find those Bolos. You'd find those best items. Sometimes that's dangerous because you'll get the fraud ones and the, you know, the, the money laundering ones or whatever. But I'll do that with polo. Do it with vintage polo. So you're out there looking around, what are, what are the vintage polo items that sell? What are the trucker hats that sell? And so you'll find those items. So I did it one time with polo. I saw those, had it in my mind, had it in my brain. And so when I saw it, plus it's unique, you know, you look at it and you're like, hey, this thing's pretty cool. And you hadn't seen it before. You know, I've been doing this a long time. If you haven't seen something before and you think it's cool, chances are somebody else does too. That is if you have good taste. If you have bad taste, don't trust your instincts. <laughs> I don't know. My wife would say I have bad taste. But then again, I, I picked her out. So what does that say? Hmm. 
Thanks for the question.